Hello, in this video we are designing a 1 milliamp current source using a single discrete VAT transistor and this circuit needs to be able to supply 1 milliamp to a load of at least 2 kilo ohms. So let's start with a skeleton of the circuit, a topology. We're going to use an MPN transistor. Now transistors are three terminal devices. You have a base, an emitter, and a collector. And this device, if we connect an emitter resistor, and we set the voltage at the emitter, something, we will be able to create sync current, an emitter current, which will then be able to be provided to a load. So this is our VCC, this is our load, this is our base. So let's start with a simple model of the VGD transistor in the active region. We can think of the transistor as a device whose voltage between the base and the meter controls the current in the collector and in the emitter. So this is a simple model where we can think of the base emitter junction as a PN junction, and we get current in the other terminals as long as that junction is forward bias, and so around 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 volts. If you have that, then the collector is approximately equal to the emitter current. This simple model allows us to do a lot of analysis of BGT, BGT circuits, as well as design, that are in DC. You may also know that the transistor acts as an amplifier, as a current amplifier, meaning a small base current becomes a larger collector current, and the collector is beta times the base current, beta maybe 100 or so, so 100 times larger than the base, but as much as possible, I try to do a design that does not rely on beta. And why is that? Beta changes significant, significantly from transistor to transistor. It also changes with temperature. It changes with current. And so if you're using a test book or you're doing design that relies on beta and, and beta plus one, that level of precision, right? is not that useful in actual design, okay? You cannot rely on beta, so beta or beta plus one, to me, in this design, is the same, is beta. But let's try to design circuits that are as much as possible beta independent. So with that, let's start. So if we assume that the PN junction base emitter is forward bias, meaning we have 0 0.7 volts drop, then we are going to get current in the collector and current in the emitter. And we already mentioned in this model that the collector current and the emitter current are approximately equal. The collector current is slightly less than the emitter. So as you can imagine, if we were able to set the voltage at the emitter, say at one volt, let's imagine that we use a, a supply here of 10 volts, and we were able to set the voltage at the emitter at one volt, and that was fixed, we could select the emitter resistor of 1K to force the 1 milliamp through the emitter um, resistor, which then we will provide the 1 milliamp through the collector network to the load resistor. And that's really how we're going to do it. So step one is to set VE at a particular uh, voltage, it is good to, to set it sufficiently low. We are going to see that that helps with compliance. So I'm going to say approximately equal to one volt and choose RE for desired current. So if our voltage at the meter, voltage emitter is one volt, then Re for a 1 milliamp, it will be 1 volt over 1 milliamp equals 1 kilo ohm. 1 kilo ohm. 
Again, if we were able to achieve this, we will get an emitter current of one milliamp. So the current flowing through the emitter, it will be one milliamp. And therefore, the collector current, the current flowing through the load, also will be one milliamp, and we will get the one milliamp supply. Now, in order to be able to do this, we will need another supply here, right? And we will need to have that supply. So we need the split supplies in this design to, to be set the base voltage at what? 1.7. So that's step two. Step two. Set B at the base, V emitter plus 0 0.7 approximately. That's what we do here. And this is what we need here. So we have our current source design. Now we will ask that this should provide the one milliamp to a load up to two kilo ohms. So we should check at 2K if this is an R load or an RC of two kilo ohms, what is the voltage at the collector, right? And we wanna make sure that the voltage at the collector is higher, at least 0.2 volts higher than the voltage of the meter. Otherwise the transistor is not in the active region and the circuit will not work. And this is what limits our compliance. And so the voltage at the collector, the voltage at the collector is equal to the voltage PCC minus the voltage drop, IC times RC, the resistor that you have connected to the collector, which in this case is 10 volts minus one milliamp. This is just the load current and this is the load resistor, times two kilo ohms or a volts. Notice that it is greater, the voltage at the collector is voltage greater than the voltage of the, at the emitter by more than 0 0.2 volts and is also greater than the voltage at the base. So the transistor is working in the active region. Perfect in which case this model works. Now, recall that I mentioned, let's set this voltage low. Why is that? Because the higher it is, the less compliance you are going to get. Remember, the collector voltage needs to be higher than the meter voltage. If we were to plot the compliance of this source, and this is, let's look at, as a function of the load, RL, what is our load current? So if we short, short it, no problem. It's still going to be one milliamp. And, but as you keep increasing it, it's going to come to a point where the drop that we have here across the load is sufficiently high that the collector voltage approximates the one volt or goes under in which case, the transistor is no longer in the active region, and this is going to happen, okay? This is due to saturation, okay, limited compliance. So in this case, what is the compliance? Well, think, if we put, for instance, 8.5 kilo ohms here, one milliamp, so 10 minus one milliamp, that's 8.5 kilo ohms, right? Now we have 10, minus 1.5 volts, right? 1.5 is where we will be. Notice we have an issue here. The collector needs to be higher than the base and it needs to be a little bit higher than the emitter. So probably around 8.5 um, or so, we are going to see the, the circuit no longer working as a current source. Now the design required that they will operate as a current source around two kilo ohms, and that's just fine. Let's simulate it and see. 
So first of all, let's choose here a 2K. And do an operating point analysis. Okay, let's check the voltage levels. So 10 volts, fine, 1.7 volts working. We expect that that's the voltage at the base, the voltage at the meter is 1.7 minus 0 0.7, a dial drop between the base and the meter. So that's around one volt. There you go. And we just calculated so that for two kilo ohms, the voltage at the collector is going to be approximately a volts. Boom, everything is working fine. So let's see uh, the current now. I'm going to So remember, we are trying to design a one milliamp source. And there you go, you got a one milliamp, very close to one milliamp. So our analysis is working right. Let's simulate the compliance. So I'm going to do a parameter sweep. So step param R load from uh, actually, I'm going to go, yeah, from 500k to 10k in increments of 250 ohms. There you go. I'm going to define my variable as R load. And let's run it. And what you can see is that indeed we have a stiff source independently of the load for all the values where the transistor is operating in the active region, okay? which requires a base emitter voltage of around 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 volts, meaning a forward bias junction. And then it requires that the collector is higher than the meter as well as the base. And the meter needs to be by around 0 0.2 volts or so.